In this lesson, we will cover information about placing complex orders. Before we begin, we will need to add some new imports compared to our usual two. First, be sure to include from IBAPI dot tag underscore value import tag value. Then be sure to add from IBAPI dot contract import combo leg. Let's begin by placing some more complex orders. Let's start by making a stock combo. Now this same process could be used for futures or option spreads with different contract details. In this case, I want to simultaneously buy Tesla and sell Apple as a stock combo. While moving through this lesson, please keep an open mind as to what buy, sell, and long and short mean with respect to combos. For example, when I enter a short position for just one stock, I need to sell the stock when I have a position of zero. Some traders can be confused by selling shares to enter a position and buying shares to close a position. This logic can doubly apply to combo orders. This is because I can buy a combo, which will leave me short in a position, or I can sell a combo which would make me long in that position. To further explain this, let's start with a brief example. Let's assume I want to be long for the total trade. Right now, Tesla currently has a higher share price than Apple, so I will use that as my base value. So if I want to be long for the whole combo, I can enter the trade by either buying the combo using a positive ratio on Tesla and a negative ratio on Apple, or I can sell the combo using a negative ratio on Tesla and a positive ratio on Apple. This structure is just like a vector scalar multiplication. You can think of buy as a positive one and sell as a negative one. And so in this matrix, you could see that I am trying to buy the whole of the share and therefore Tesla as a buy order times the whole of the buy order for the combo will net me a positive Tesla position. Similarly, if I buy the sell of an Apple position, I will wholly be negative on that. We can invert this, and I can then do a sell order for the full combo. If I am selling the Tesla order and selling the whole of the combo, in reality, that is a negative one times a negative one, which brings me to a positive one, or a buy in this example. Similarly, a negative one, or a sell for the combo, times a positive one, or a buy for the Apple share, will then give me a overall position of negative, or shorting, the Apple stock. To start, let's look at our contract. We'll be introducing a new concept here. As usual, I will have my contract object, my contract. For the example, I will include both of my underlyings. In the stock combo example, I will be using Apple and Tesla. However, for a future option spread, you will just use your one underlying value, such as ES or SPX respectively. Now, for the security type, I will use BAG. This indicates that I'm using a combo order to the system. Exchange and currency will remain the same as usual. Now I can begin to add my legs to my order. I will create my first leg. To do so, I will create leg one and set it equal to combo leg and then a set of parentheses. Then I will add my legs contract ID. In this case, I will use Tesla. I will use a ratio of one. However, you are welcome to change this value to a higher number as needed. I'll add my legs action or buy per my ratio before and then set my legs exchange as smart. Then I can edit my second leg, which I will call leg two. Just like before, I will add Apple's con ID, another ratio of 1, and exchange of smart. However, this time I will set my action to sell. Now that we have our legs, we can attach them to our contract object. To do this, I will type mycontract.combolegs and set it equal to a pair of brackets. Then, I can append each leg to my list, mycontract.combolegs 
dot append leg one in parentheses, and then again with leg two in parentheses. Keep in mind, I am only doing a two leg stock combo. Just like in TWS, I could have up to six legs on a guaranteed spread. This is everything we need for our contract. Let's get started with our order object. We have our usual options of a market or limit order, but there are alternative order types such as rel plus market that we would recommend investigating further in our documentation's order section. As I mentioned before, Tesla is at about $225, and Apple is at about $150. If we do the math, we know our order would put us at a current price of about $75. I will set my limit price to $80. Our other order attributes will be the same, except in my case, I will be adding my order dot smart combo routing params as an empty list. These are for unique values for combo orders. In particular, because I'm using a non-guaranteed order, I will need to approve this for the system. To do so, I will append to that list tag value, and then in parentheses, non-guaranteed, and set the second value to one to approve the use of non-guaranteed orders. That I can now submit my order. If we look at the order in TWS, we will see the order pair reflected appropriately. Before moving on, I would note that this combo order structure is the same structure used for bear call or bull put orders, iron condors, and more. Please reference our documentation for further information. With the combo order complete, I would like to now build a bracket order. For bracket orders, we can use a different approach than what was used for combos. Here, I will only be making a profit taker and a stop loss bracket order for an Apple stock order. This will start as a standard limit order, just like in our prior videos. I will add my action here as a buy, though instead of my usual my order name, I will call this parent. I will also add parent.transmit equals false, so we do not prematurely submit and or execute a trade. Now I have my parent order, but I need to go ahead and build my profit taker initially. To do so, I will create my order object, profit taker. Now I'll set my order ID to my parent ID plus one, and then my parent ID accordingly. I'll set my action to sell, another order type of LMT, and a limit price. Once again, I'll leave my profit taker dot transmit equal to false. And now making this one last order, this time for stop loss. Like before, I will set my stop loss as my order object's name. Then I can deem my stop loss action as sell. Now I can set my order type to stop in my stop loss, and then set stop loss dot AUX price for the stop price. In this instance, I will change my stop loss transmit value to true now that I have all of my orders. Now we can place all of these orders. As usual, I can use my self dot place order request to start placing my orders. I will go ahead and place my order for my parent order with my parent order ID, my contract, and then the parent object. We will then do the same for my profit taker with its respective values, and then finally we can end with our stop loss. I would note that we have to use the parent first as the other two pieces of the order build off of the parent's order ID. Conversely, we must end with the stop loss in this scenario as this contains the final order transmission from that transmit.true or transmit equals false. If we run our code, we could see in Trader Workstation our bracket order posted in our order summary. We will be able to see these values in our open order or order status callbacks. 
bracket orders use the same structure as hedging orders and OCA orders. We would advise reviewing our documentation further if you are interested in using these types of orders. It is important to bear in mind the order efficiency ratio, which tracks the ratio of messages sent or submissions, modifications, and cancellations to the number of orders which actually execute. In general, this ratio is expected to be around 20 or less and is automatically tracked by the interactive broker servers. Please review our IBKR info articles describing this topic for more information as well as the calculations to find these values. This concludes our video on complex orders. Thank you for watching and we look forward to having you join us for more TWS Python API lessons.